Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial in Network Analysis and Synthesis. In today's tutorial, we'll discuss transient response of series RL circuit with DC excitation. It's a super important and super interesting topic. This topic is going to uncover various special functionalities of uh, components L and C in the current capacitor some magical properties of L and C will be discussed in this series of tutorial. So let us begin. Uh, when we talk about a series RL circuit with DC excitation, we'll, uh, we'll simply represent that circuit having a DC voltage connected in series with R and L. Now please understand if you look at this circuit uh, and if I ask you to uh, draw the current in this circuit, uh, you'll simply say that the current in this circuit will be equivalent to I, which is V by R. The reason for that is because L will not uh, offer any resistance in this circuit because this circuit has a DC voltage connected to it and if we calculate the XL of the reactance of L that will be zero so this circuit would actually behave like a resistive circuit um, nevertheless but the fact of the matter is this circuit will not start behaving like a purely resistive circuit from the moment go. Now we need to understand this statement very well. Now if I was to connect a switch here, let us say I connect a switch here that that is closed at time t is equivalent to zero. Now what happens momentarily after time t is equivalent to zero? Will, will the circuit current uh, be still equivalent to V by R or what will happen to the circuit current? Will it eventually rise to this value or will it attain this value at time t is equivalent to zero or how much time will it take to get to a value of V by R is, is everything about um, that we are going to discuss. Now, and this thing is known as the transient response of series RL circuit. Um, so, if we were to define this thing in terms of timelines, I would say that uh, the timeline of this circuit can be divided into two parts. One, one time, one portion of the timeline is known as the transient portion. And the other portion which comes after the transient one is the steady state portion of the timeline. Before the circuit reaches its steady state value, we know its steady state value. We know that uh, inductor will, will act like a short circuit uh, in DC, but it will not act like a short circuit to DC from the moment go, from time t is equivalent to zero. And we need to understand that. We need to understand that inductor will take some time and that time is known as transient time. The time the inductor takes to offer zero resistance to DC is the tra transition time of inductor. It is the time that inductor takes to adjust itself to the DC voltage because uh, when the switch is closed inductor does not know that uh, if it is being subjected to an AC or a DC it will take some time to get itself adjusted to what kind of a voltage it is being subjected to uh, for example if it is a DC voltage it will tune itself to be a short circuit thing it will not offer any reactance if it is an AC voltage it will tune itself to offer reactance depending upon the frequency of the uh, voltage source and so on. So that is why it becomes very very important to understand the 
transient response of uh, RL circuits and RC circuits and RLC circuits for DC excitation because we know that for for any AC circuit L is going to behave like a normal component with certain amount of reactance we know that C is going to behave like a normal component with certain amount of reactance and that reactance is calculated um, from the very beginning of the timeline when the switch is closed but um, but for DC circuits they actually um, show their uh, behavior the magical behavior for example if I say that inductor is inductor is a magical device that supports voltage jumps but it does not support current jumps so that that summarizes the actual behavior of inductor for DC and this is what we are going to study today mathematically also now <coughs> if we were to uh, we we assume the current to be small i and applying Kirchhoff's voltage law applying KVL we get R into I plus L di by dt is equivalent to the total voltage in the circuit this is pretty understandable dividing everything by L in the second step we get I'll, I'll write down the second step here uh, we get di by dt plus r by l into i is equal to v by l and if you look at the title of this tutorial uh, it says it's a first order circuit and that is clear from this equation that this this circuit has first uh, derivative of i uh, in its equation so it's a first order circuit and now the solution of these circuits are given by uh, if, if we were to find out I from this uh, equation the primary concern is to find out I uh, we need to see the behavior of I whether uh, whether the current uh, uh, starts at a value of v by r at time t is equal to zero or does it take some time and that time is known as the transient time to reach to a value of v by r or does it ever reach to a value of v by r at all and, and that can be derived from this equation if we were to find out the uh, the solution for i and the, the solution for i can be given as i c plus i p now to to understand uh, this uh, this thing, you need to you need to study um, the the homogeneous differential equations, their their solutions. Because uh, when you study homogeneous differential equation, they have two kinds of solutions. One is known as the complementary function, and the other one is known as the particular solution. And uh, the reason. Uh, this I consists of two components I'll mark it with a different color here that there are two components of I here this component represents the the transition of I from from a zero value to uh, to a value where it is intended to be for example when when the switch was was not turned on or before time t is equivalent to zero this the current in the circuit was zero and at time t is equivalent to zero also the current in the circuit was zero so the current has built itself uh, gradually uh, although gradually is not the correct word because uh, because the transition time from from the current being zero to current reaching its steady state value is very very fast so but surely does it take uh, it does take some time so that time the growth of the current is represented by IC 
which is known as the complementary function. You could note down this keyword. This is known as complementary function. And IP is known as the particular solution. And uh, the we could write the value of IC to be equivalent to C and minus R by L raised to the power T. And the particular solution of this uh, represents the steady state value and we know that the steady state value of the current uh, for this circuit will be V by R. It will eventually reach to a value where the current will be at its maximum and will only be governed by the resistance offered by this R. So what we have now here is we have IC and V by R. So I can say that my total I becomes equivalent to C E raised to the power minus R by L into T plus V by R. Now uh, I'll I'll write down a statement here that due to electrical inertia inductor has this inherent property it has electrical inertia that does not allow sudden changes of current through it so um, the point that I want you to remember is uh, inductor supports voltage jumps but it does not support current jumps now you need to commit this thing to your memory that inductor does not support current jumps and due to the electrical inertia the nature of inductance uh, it would not allow sudden change of current through it and that is why uh, this initial condition that I at 0 minus is equivalent to I at 0 plus this is very very important the moment we turn the switch on the current is zero and it slowly starts to build up so I can I can put this initial condition uh, 40 is equivalent to zero plus in this equation and what I get is uh, I get this thing to be equivalent to zero at T is equal to zero plus I get C E my time is zero here so my C becomes equivalent to minus V by R. I can put the C here. So my I becomes equivalent to V by R E minus R by L into T plus V by R. The only reason we have put um, we have taken initial condition here so I'll mention a note here, taking initial condition t is equivalent to 0 plus the only reason why we do that is to find out the value of this constant c here right so by putting the value of t is equivalent to 0 we find the value of the constant here that comes out to be minus v by r and we substitute it in the uh, in this equation this is the most important primary equation the value of the instantaneous current at any time so if you wish to find out the value of the current at any time may it be uh, a time very very uh, initial just close to the beginning of 
the closing of the switch or maybe at a very very late stage uh, falling into the category of being a steady state uh, time so you can find the value of i at any point in time so this becomes the value of i and this this is a rising exponential and if we plot the value of i with respect to t that gives us an interesting re elevation that the current slowly starts to build up from zero and it attains a steady state v by r although this is going to attain this steady state v by r at time uh, when time becomes infinite but surely it, it it stays at it stays close to the v by r value this this value is by the way v, v by r it endeavors to stay at that uh, value in the close proximity of that value at most of the times once it has crossed the transient state and there is there is no hard line as to uh, where we can we can define that okay this is this time up to this period is known as transient time or time up to this period is known as transient time but one famous uh, one famous junction where where we monitor this thing is the 63.2% of the final value uh, so that value is obtained when we put t is equal to uh, l by r if you if you put the value of t is equal to l by r in the in the equation of instantaneous current you'll find that uh, your current rises to uh, 63% which is which is a very significant value because most of the effort is is done in attaining this value 63.2 value and that that time is known as l by r or it's known as the time constant of the circuit you'll you'll find this term being used in all the numericals all the time so this is time constant a very very important term time constant is the time taken by a transient circuit to reach its 63.2% of its value but this value again uh, is is not a hard line of defining the range of the transient portion of uh, the circuit if i i was to say that okay any change from being 0 to 95% is transient for me so my definition of transient is different from any anybody else's so that is how you uh, you you define the response of an re circ rl circuit with dc excitation which is also known as the first order circuit for uh, transient response and i'll come up with other topics in this series i'll cover up rc circuits then i'll cover up rlc circuits and then i'll cover parallel circuits but the fact of the matter is the basic nature of inductors and capacitors they need to be uh, kept in mind all the time while studying uh, dc excitation or the transient transient response of the circuits in dc excitation well i hope this this comprehensive tutorial was helpful and if you liked the content of this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel that will be a great help thank you so much for stopping by and watching the video you have a good day ahead bye